discovered my wife's affair the day she was admitted into hospital, now years later she can't accept my engagement to my fiancé. If ever there was a prize for the most horrible way to learn of your significant other's affair I would probably win it and be in its hall of fame, like so many people in this sub I suddenly found myself as a member of a club that nobody ever wants to be part of. I will never forget the sound of my ex-sister in law's voice as she kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, over and over on the phone while I drove home from a week-long business trip. I was confused and had absolutely no idea what she meant but only after I managed to calm her down somewhat did she inform me that my wife was in hospital and that I needed to hurry home, my mind went into overdrive as I tried to get more information as well as not crash while I began speeding to get there faster. The only thing she told me is that it was an assault then cut the call and wouldn't answer when I tried to call her again. A bit of background. My ex and I met in our mid-twenties, it was through a mutual friend at a barbecue. At first she seemed almost too good to be true, not only was she incredibly beautiful but she was also shy and introverted. It took a while for us to officially date but once it happened I was over the moon, when we first tried to get intimate she suddenly started crying, should have taken this as a bad sign. I freaked out and thought it was something I did but she apologized the next day and told me she was triggered, as it turns out two years before meeting me she was in a long-term relationship and a guy that was abusive both emotionally, physically as well as mentally. He would degrade her during their moments of intimacy then apologize after ward, she had a flashback but reassured me it had nothing to do with me so we took things slow as she was still in therapy. It was tough but because I loved her I believed once we got over this it would make our relationship stronger and for a while it honestly appeared that way. Fast forward another year and we'd gotten engaged, first time intimacy also happened during this stage, I was fortunate enough to be able to buy a house for us courtesy of inheritance from my late uncle. Things were going great and I half seriously suggested we plant a peach tree, important for later on, to signify new beginnings and she was all for it. We were wedded not long after that and quite frankly it was absolutely amazing. Of course we had our normal ups and downs like every married couple but I considered us more lucky because she always made it a point to never go to bed upset with each other and she would always point out gently if I did anything to upset her. Sometime later life basically happened and I was promoted at my job, it meant more pay but it also meant I would be traveling more for work conferences and business meetings. I noticed she had been getting down a lot more and wasn't being as intimate as before, she would keep her phone close to her and even stopped gently addressing things that upset her. I tried to talk to her about it but she assured me that she was fine and this was a phase she was going through and having no reason to not trust her I let it go. She would sometimes go to her sister's place and spend the night telling me she just needed a bit of girl time with her sister, the day I got that fateful phone call was the day she was meant to be keeping her sister company again. I remember rushing into the hospital barely breathing and frantically asking about my wife when world's most understanding and patient police officer sat me down to explain what happened. He told me he was a friend of my SIL and he happened to respond to a domestic disturbance call, he arrived on the scene to find a couple fighting. The supposed boyfriend was on top of the female punching her and she was screaming trying to scratch him, this didn't make any sense to me because 1, this had nothing to do with my wife because we're married and 2, literally everyone who knew my wife knew she wouldn't do that. He gave me a knowing look and placed his hand on my shoulder then told me to be very calm because said girlfriend was actually my wife. If it weren't for the severity of the situation I would have laughed in his face but something in the way he said everything made me believe him, I then was ushered in by a nurse to see my wife and what greeted me to this day I still can hardly find the words to describe it. I just stood there for what seemed like an eternity then a doctor came it and explained her injuries to me. The jaw was slightly fractured, her left eye was completely swollen shut and had massive bruising covering half of her face as well as three broken ribs. Then the doctor dropped another bomb and told me she was pregnant, I still couldn't understand how this happened then I caught sight of her sister. She at first tried to avoid me but at the persuasion of her police officer friend she told her what she knew, it turns out my wife's ex had gotten in contact with her five months ago, he was doing this redemption pyramid step thing where he would apologize to people he has wronged in order to clear his karma, anyone else bs meter going crazy right now. They began talking more then he convinced her to meet up for coffee and show her he was a changed man. Obviously old feelings resurfaced coupled with the fact that he appeared changed now it soon developed into an emotional affair, my wife approached her sister for advice who told her to take things slow and just get it out of her system if she needed to which then lead to a physical affair three months later. She actually told my wife that she should at least make peace with her ex in whatever form it may be and even offered to cover for my wife once in while. My SIL was in tears at this point and kept apologizing to me saying that she didn't know about the abuse as my wife never told anyone other than me and her therapist at the time about it. 
I was numb, I just couldn't feel anything and was absolutely dumbfounded by my wife's actions. When my wife finally woke up I was there and she burst into tears upon seeing me. I spent the following months in zombie flight mode, there was individual counseling for her as well as marriage counseling for us at the strong urging of her family. In counseling she was surprisingly forthcoming about how it happened and how she absolutely hated herself for causing me pain, she mentioned how at one point on her way home from his place she actually fantasized about driving into the river because she smelt like him and didn't want his scent to corrupt me, however that made sense. She said she the tried to end it but was too weak and only after learning that she was pregnant that it actually woke her up and made her realize that any further contact with this man was toxic to not only her but the unborn child as well hence went to end things in person for good when he snapped on her. She became a shell of herself and developed a phobia for any other males but me, she one point she couldn't even use the bathroom at night unless I was holding her hand, sad right. After the baby was born, son by the way, we got a paternity test and he was mine, but the more time I spent with her the more I realized I didn't hate my wife, I actually loathed her. I couldn't see the woman I married but instead saw his leftovers each time I looked at her, I decided to leave because I was afraid I'd do something I'd regret and be exactly like her abusive ex. She begged me not to leave and even made the ridiculous offer of giving me a hall pass as well as slapping her if I wanted to, I knew at this point I had to get out. She was actually very generous during the divorce, she moved back into her parents and signed a very well thought out co-parenting plan issued by the courts. Moving forward three years later and I meet my now fiancé by chance, I was in a bookstore with a buddy of mine and we were discussing Egyptian mythology when this beautiful woman approached me to correct me on my pronunciations of the Egyptian gods and cities. Needless to say immensely impressed by not only her understanding but also by the fact that she is Egyptian herself. We exchanged numbers which eventually lead us to dating, when I finally proposed to her it was actually in front of the preach tree I had planted years ago. I got down on one knee but before I got my answer she ran into the house then came out with a ring as well. Turns out she was actually planning on proposing herself because she was madly in love with me and she just didn't want any other woman to have me, my son in all his sweet childlike innocence told his mother what happened because he was present when it happened. My ex literally showed up that night in the rain yelling about how could I propose to her, my fiancé, in front of our tree and that this isn't the end of us. I am completely exhausted at this point, I cannot go and see because she is the mother of my child but she is basically harassing me and my fiancé. How do I convince her to move on, to get over her fear of men and not force me to get a restraining order? Sorry it was long but I am really desperate. Edit, wanted to ask a question to the insightful women of Reddit, something that still bugs me to this day is the fact that she even made time for her ex who took pleasure in destroying her only for her to suffer a much worse fate. Is it normal for the abused to want the attention of the abuser even if she might hate him, something my ex said once. Edit 2, forget to add this in the original post, when my fiancé presented me with the ring which she was gonna use to propose to me she had an engraving on the inner band which states, to my pharaoh, dot damn I love this woman. Update. Wow didn't expect this type of response thank you all so much for your support and kind words both for me, my fiancé and my ex. It's sad that my situation with my ex and her abusive past isn't as uncommon as I thought, reading some of your similar cases really makes one almost lose hope but glad to see some people have recovered from them. Now for what has happened since my first post. First off a big thank you to user mama22045 for your simple yet amazing advice saved us a lot of trouble. Now on to what has happened so far. Since my last post my son's birthday was coming up and he told us he wanted to have a camp night for it. Now I must explain the boy absolutely loves the outdoors. Everything from camping to hiking to even playing in rivers are his favorite and obviously due to the ongoing situation we cannot go to our usual spots, so I offered my backyard for it. Another request he had was for my ex to sleep over as well, he wanted to imitate a scene from one of his kid adventure shows where both parents are sitting on either of the child and all three are roasting marshmallows on the campfire. Now I had absolutely no intention of denying my son's birthday wishes but at the same time I couldn't have my ex sleep in the same tent as me and my son, that would be far too disrespectful to my fiancé even though she said she understood, it was clear she wasn't okay with it. My ex seemed to take advantage of this and kept saying how much she was looking forward to spending the night with her two men and even went as far as to buy a whole lot of camping equipment that would put Bear grills to shame. She was certainly trying to rub it in my fiancé's face and wasn't graceful about it either, I had to tell her to stop a couple of times but she only relented when I threatened to invite her sister. 
Ever since our divorce my ex has had a burning hatred for her sister, she, my ex, acknowledges her role in the destruction of our marriage but blames her sister for encouraging the affair and not safeguarding from her making choices that would ruin hers but more importantly, according to her, our life together. It's gotten so bad that she refuses to let her sister spend any significant amount of time with our son which at one point caused my ex SIL to have severe depression. My ex SIL has been trying for years to reconcile with her sister but it just seems to get worse as time goes on, a redditor mama22045 offered me a simple and effective solution. She suggested I go out and purchase a multi-room tent that way my fiancé could be included, I wasted no time and immediately went out to get one. Of course my ex wasn't too happy about that but was glad to be under the same roof as me. During the birthday celebration my son was on cloud 9, he ran around the yard and pretended he was a great explorer discovering a new land. When evening came I made the fire and my ex provided the marshmallows, he excitingly sat between us and started roasting his marshmallow alongside us. What I didn't expect was after we were done taking pictures and making esmores he handed my fiancé a stick and a marshmallow as well and sat next to her to make his second esmore. It's honestly a mystery how something this pure and perfect could come out of the absolute mess that was the relationship between me and my ex. My ex asked for a bit of my time to which I obliged, we stepped into the kitchen and she apologized for her behavior on the day that I proposed but not for her actions following that. She told me she still sees me as her husband in her mind so the thought of me giving my heart to another terrified her, she said she never wanted to cause me pain and would give anything to go back in time and undo her mistakes. She mentioned how happy she was when the paternity test showed that I was the father because she thought it was a new beginning for us and that he was proof our love. I thanked her for the courage to share all this but told her I was happy with where I was in life and with whom I was with but hoped she would find someone to make her happy as well. She said she meant what she told on the day we divorced and will wait for me. I left the kitchen feeling exhausted because none of what I was trying to say got through to her, we decided to call it a night where me and my fiancé slept in one room of the tent and my ex with my son in another. All in all a good birthday for my son but not so good night for me. That's things so far and promise to update if anything major happens.